What's up, wrestling fans? It's your boy, Mr. Team Brady, coming from WCC Wrestling Commentary Central. Happy Memorial Day to everybody up in here. We have some of our members from WCC. Mr. Antonio, the professor. Mr. E-Dog from Gangsta Nation. We have Shannon, one of our divas from WCC. We also have B. Jones, the linebacker. I'm sorry, I don't know what the fuck to call you. (laughs) <laughs> sorry, bro. Sorry. And we and we have Mr. Sean, our Yo. second wrestling historian from I'm not going I'm not going to put out what your what your work ethic is. I'm I'm not going to do that. Anywho, how is everybody Memorial Day weekend has been? Oh, it's been fantastic. Um, it's wonderful. Um, um, did everybody eat good? Did everybody get fat? No. I am already fat. I just got fatter. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Myself came back from Chicago um, earlier today. And, you know, I didn't want to come back straight up. I didn't want to come back. I'm dead serious. I had a blast. Went on a boat cruise. Ate. Fell asleep, got up again, came back to this bitch, saw um, a bogus ass accident on my way back home. Totally bogus. But that's here, yeah, well. And I'm, I'm thinking sorry, we about to. Get... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. We know that you got that cricket phone, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was just playing. But anyway. What's up, wrestling fans? We're going to start the show. We're going to talk about a little bit of Raw, a little bit of No Way Out, a little bit of Backstage. Well, first of all, Raw tonight was pretty good. Um, everybody kind of, I, I, to my surprise, Cena wasn't available. I do not know where Cena was, but they said that he was going to appear back on Monday night next week. So pretty much it was all about the big nasty bastard, the big show. His heel persona came in full effect, came into fruition today. And I'm glad that he's embracing his heel persona because I'm sorry. This dude in the in in diapers and shit, sorry, it's not doing nothing for me. Dead you know, serious. Big show, big show actually showed me something today. He he actually is big nasty. He fulfilled that role, you know. And I'm proud that Raw Ra was really good tonight. It was, yeah, it was actually better than last week. I thought it was like a video. He was playing it through your ear instead of listening out loud like a normal thing. So, we all Huh? What happened? Okay, awkward oh, silence. Okay. Yeah. So anybody? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, like, but like you say, <laughs> but, you know, Big Show, you know, he, he did what he had to do. You know, he basically stomped the competition tonight. It was great. Now, seeing that um, Big Show is going pro- possibly going to be feuding with Cena or, or or probably more more so, he's gonna pretty much uh, be feuding with Truth and Kofi Kingston, at, you know, as well. You know, seeing that they tried to come to Bros Clay's rescue tonight, which was an epic fail. But let me ask you guys a question: Do you see Big Show being a world champion by SummerSlam or sometime this year? No. Nah. From here on out, Big Show is nowhere near the title picture in regards to the situation. As a matter of fact, I give it about maybe one more month with the Cena, but his biggest feud is going to be with Brodus Clay. I mean, if you think about it, Brodus Clay really hasn't, hasn't had any purpose since he debuted. But now, when you got Happy Giant versus Big Mean Giant, you can actually get a credible feud getting out of that right there. That way, Big mm-hmm. Show also helps get Brodus Clay over as a believable face, which they can then turn around and use him for other things besides just being 
a shucking and jiving fool with two sexy black women on his side. In my honest opinion. Hey, hey, you hear them sirens in the back room? You, you know, the sirens in the back? I swear I didn't do shit. Straight up. Now, just because y'all hear a black man, y'all hear your sirens, doesn't mean that I did anything. I just wanted to say that. Continue, Tom. <clears throat> you, you, you know, okay, the only reason why you hear sirens is in the background is because I'm actually right near a fire station. So, yeah. Shut your ass up. You know, you know damn well them sirens was in the back of my house. You understand? Anywho, anybody, anybody else got any comments on the big show feud with Brothers Clay? I think it's a good idea. I mean, like you can like you know, he said you know, you know, Bros Clay really had no, you know, purpose in the WWE except for being a sideshow. And now that show is like in his face now. I think it's a, I think it's a good feud, you know, leading up to maybe no, um, not no way. I'm sorry, but uh. SummerSlam, and you know, I don't even see Show even getting a title at all ever again. I think the Intercontinental was his last piece of, a, of gold in the WWE. So are you basically saying that he's going to be another Mark Henry, just like simply you, you get a title and or, or in this case you pretty much is going to be a full-time jobber until you retire? I think so. I mean, Big Show, Big Show, you know, Paul Wright, whatever we want to call him, has basically done his his duty as a as a W superstar wrestler. You know, there's no. I mean, he's a veteran to the game, and I don't think you know putting a title back on him will ever give him whatever satisfaction. Other than he's a big guy who can mash who can mash his way into the ring against any competition. Mm. You know. That's interesting. What about you, E Dog? What you think? Well, I do Mr. think it's Pop Tars. And the hell you know about my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, dude. <laughs> I don't know about my Pop Tars now. Uh, yeah, it's time for Brothers to step up. You know, I think he'll get his, he's getting his chance now. You know, like y'all said, he been out there. You know, just dancing and everything. He get to show his monster side now. Oh, you talk about Brothers Clay or you talk about Big Show? Yeah, yeah, Brothers. Well, it, it's finally time that they let Big Show be a monster. They tried it one time before, but, you know, he went back to his comedy thing, so. Which was an epic fail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So they just need to let him go ahead and run with being a monster. A corporate, a corporate <clears throat> monster at that. Yeah. Yes, um, let's see. What about, um... Let's talk about the the real big story of the WWE, Chris Jericho. Let me tell you, I've been waiting to talk about this for a while. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, se- whoa, 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 wait. One time. Go ahead, um, Sean. All right. When, let me tell you this. Vince and Jericho has WWE by the nuts. And, and Jericho can shake the world, in which he did this past weekend. Now, let me say this. I'm a Jericho fan through and through. Whatever he does, I'm down for. Whatever he does. And what he did was what heels do. And that's piss off the fans. Now, WWE should have told Jericho the laws of what should have went down, but I feel that the WWE should have never suspended him at all. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because Jericho, did, Jer- once again, Jericho is a veteran to the game. He is a showsman, and that's what he did. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. Now, for WWE to do that, it's wrong. Now, I can't say if it's an angle or not. You know, if it's an angle, it's a hell of a good angle. But if it's not, then I feel that WWE needs to go and apologize to Jericho, let him come back, even though Jericho said this was his last run, like, period, mm-hmm. which now opens up, opens up a whole new door for guys like Miz, uh, Ziggler. But the thing is, is that Jericho did what Jericho knew the do and that was basically play a heel and he shouldn't you know, W should have never suspended him. He should have go ahead and finish out, you know, all the way up to SummerSlam like he said he was going to, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm still a Jericho fan. You know. Anybody else? I don't right. wanna know I don't wanna know what the hell he did. Well apparently Jericho um he disrespected the uh, Brazilian, a.k.a. Blanca, 
from Street Fighter's flag. So, Puerto Rico. <laughs> If well, you want to be technical, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, Jericho pretty much he he disrespected their flag and he got suspended for it. But, but wait a minute, he's a heel. Make that what he's supposed to do. But yeah, but when you go into when you go into another country's regulation or in their jurisdiction, you know, with their laws or whatever, it's just some some laws that. Well, some things they just don't tolerate. And when you disrespect somebody's flag, like say, like for instance, if we burn the American flag, we get fined for that, or more so, we can be thrown in jail for that. Well, when when they went to Brazil, Jericho, I guess, stomped or shit on a flag, and they didn't like that shit, and and now Jericho is just suspended for thirty days, which. You might as well smoke a fucking blunt for like for for that and then get suspended for sixty that. I still don't understand how the WWE will like I, I I don't know if it's to what if they were trying to prove a point, that was a fucked up way. No, I think it was they they because it was their first show in Brazil. So Oh really? I don't, I don't, yeah, it was yeah. the first show in Brazil. So I think what happened was, mm. I don't think whoever in the back is responsible for, for public relations didn't do their homework or whatever laws they may have. <laughs> they didn't do the damn research to say, okay, this is what we can and cannot do. When the police mm-hmm. showed up, the police actually showed up and was about to arrest him if he didn't mm-hmm. apologize. So Jericho immediately apologized. The police talked to officials and said, well, let him finish the match, but we want him out. As soon as mm-hmm. he finished that match with Punk, they got him out of the country, like shipped him straight to Ecuador, because I think that was the next stop. I can understand why the WWE did it, because they're trying to stay safe so they can get this new relationship with Brazil. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's fucked up, because Jericho has been in the business for the, long, the longest time. He loves the business. He's a veteran. He ain't do nothing no different than what anybody else does when they go to a different country. So I think mm-hmm. they right. should have done a different punishment you know, take given consideration. It's their first time being there. And I know other people have different views and say, you know, you just shouldn't mess with the flag and blah, blah, blah. But I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so funny about that is, like, a long time ago, back around 96, Shawn Michaels and, and uh, Hunter, Triple H, mm-hmm. did the exact same thing to the yeah, Indian flag yeah. when they had their feud with Bret Hart, I mean, the Hart right. Foundation. Yeah, uh, he they did, not have, that. they did not have no problem with it. But now, but I think, because, but everybody, because Canada don't, but Canada don't care. Like, Canada, they laugh at it. Right. The right, they laugh at that shit. They don't give a right. fuck. Right. It's just <laughs> but see, but, they, but the thing is, all right, check it out, check it out, check it out. But they didn't suspend yeah. Sean. Why would they go ahead and suspend Jericho? They shouldn't have just suspended him. He, they should have just fined him, just like they fined Sean. Right. No, 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 no. That no, is I true, too. And, 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 and then the stupid part by it was, too, Jericho was in the middle of a feud with Orton. So that was, like, really stupid. That, like, threw everything no. off. So now Orton is going to be feeling with, with Miz. No, or with Ziggler. Uh, uh, Okay, hold on, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I was ordering my food so I couldn't speak. But here's what you got to look at it from a professional side. Because y'all know whenever I do stuff, I look at it from a business side. From a professional point of view, this is our first time in Brazil, okay? Mm-hmm. This is our first time going to a demographic that we know is 100% profitable every time we touch soil, okay? So from a business side, we have to take into consideration – one of our persons overstepped their national boundaries by doing what he did to the flag. This is mm-hmm. not something they're accustomed to. This is something they're not used to. If we do not rectify this to the highest extent possible so the nation will see what we are doing, we don't tolerate that, okay? We will lose business, and we will definitely lose the demographic that we know we can make constant money off of. Now, even though from a fan's point of view, we're like, oh, that's wrong. Y'all you know, went too far. Well, what is, the thing about this is they want to go back to Brazil. They want to do it again. They want to get Brazilian wrestlers. They want to get that Brazilian money, okay? Jericho knows how the game works, okay? Yes, mm-hmm. he was being a heel. He did what he was supposed to do as a heel. But the thing about it is that you have to remember what the customs are in the country you go to. 
That's like saying if they went over to India, okay, mm-hmm. and someone kicked over a cow, okay, to us we like, oh, man, that's a cow, that's funny, ha, 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 ha. But to them, a cow is about the sacred as you can get. Like, they will burn you on a stake if you disrespect a cow like that. You have to remember the customs of the country are really, really taken seriously. And in Brazil, their flag is one of the biggest things they take seriously. Canada, so no hamburgers. Mexico, no. United States, now, we all have history amongst them two countries that we can get away with some of them jokes because at the end of the day, them jokes will tie back to a historical story that we have with them that they mm-hmm. understand. So like the whole entire Stampede, Heart Foundation, DX situation, yeah, we just respect the flag the whole nine yards, but that's because Stampede has a wrestling history where I guarantee to you that they have disrespected the American flag at one point in time if you go back and look at the whole entire storyline. But so this is what said, this is what Sean... They have to do what they got to do to save yeah. the space. But it's what Sean yeah. said that I, it was either Sean or or Shannon. They had a good point. Whoever in the back, the credit team or whoever, they should have did their research first before Jericho went out and, and, oh, and they well, they killed know, their they flag. Know, so so that. technically, you that's can, not Jericho's fault. How would he know the their law? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. I, have to, I have to say wrong on that one. You cannot blame the creative team in regards to what a wrestler does in that ring. Chris Jericho is one of the few people in the WWE who has full control over what he does in that room. But how would Jericho know what goes on in their country if he not being told of what what you can't do that in their country? How are you supposed to know he's supposed to be the wrestler? You do not leave the states without doing your research. Exactly, but so you how would he know not, not to touch the American flag? His own fault, the real flag, yeah. How is that the their fault? But he don't know. He, but he don't. But he don't know their law. So how would that be his fault? It, it is his fault. He's not a new people. He's not brought his play out there doing that. WWE 
no more than 15% in regards to their responsibility and Jericho wow. going out there doing what he did. Wow. Really? Do anybody else have a yeah, anybody yeah. have um a counter to Tone's argument? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna argue that. No. I'm argue Go that. ahead. My thing is this. My thing is this. Okay, Kevin McBee Jericho wrestled across you know this whole entire great world that that we all in. But my thing is this. You know, Jericho. Like they said, this is the first time Jericho wrestled with the WWE in Brazil. Still, that's whatever, whatever right they gave the WWE saying, okay, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. But once again, Jericho then would not know. But once again, this is Jericho's first time in a while even coming back. Because I remember Jericho was gone for about two years. Okay. So once again, I think it's just... I don't. I blame. I, I blame the WWE for not doing their homework. I don't blame Jericho. I'm never. I'm not going to. Oh, 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 oh my God! Oh my God! Okay. 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 Hold on. Hold on. All right. Oh, we we gonna go. J- J- no, no, Jer- I mean, Tom. We we gonna go around the whole room, and then we. I I I'm gonna I give you a chance to uh, talk. Yeah. Hold on, sir. Anybody else have a comment like before I let Tom have the floor again? <laughs> e dog. Do you have a comment? All I can say is he, like you said, he's been overseas before, but he's never been to Brazil. You know, I mean, he should have looked. He was just being a heel. Put it like that. He was just being a heel. Doing what he do, and he right. didn't know that he wasn't supposed to do that. But right. I, I think um, another wrestler did something like that before. Was it, uh, man, was JBL? Did JBL do something like that? Okay. Probably did that shit in Mexico. Yeah, he probably did that shit in Mexico against his uh his feud with uh, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, yeah so I mean, if I'm not mistaken, it. yeah, he well, did some that. shit about tacos or some shit. It was some. Um, <laughs> and by the way, well, I wasn't being disrespectful. I was just recapping history. Y'all, y'all going <laughs> in the Taco Bell parking lot. <laughs> Well, this shouldn't do anything else for anybody's flag anyway. Point blank, you shouldn't mess with anybody's flag. Right, man. You don't desecrate the flag in the country, man. Okay. Hey, Brandy, you had no, something to say? No, I said, you said you just don't desecrate the flag in any country, man. You really don't need to know the rules. I mean, you're, you pretty much know that. You don't, you don't mess up in your, right. your new country. Why are you going to do it somewhere else? It's all about it. Good point. That's a good point. Maurice, did you have something to say? Yeah, it's like, I understand what, why, like, um... Jericho's picking the flag with the incident, but there's two things there. One is, and there's a point to this I think we all overlook. It. The fans, or the fan, or whoever it was, somebody threw that flag into the ring. That's like. If it was a fan. Yeah. It was I a fan that, that threw it in the ring? Oh, okay. I've heard, I've heard yeah. two different things. I've heard that either a punk water flag out, and that's the pet flag that Jericho took. Well, I've heard that a fan threw his flag into the ring or gave it to Punk as he was coming down to the ring. And when Punk put it in the corner, Jericho went. I saw the video, but I didn't see it from the beginning. From what I saw, Jericho picked up the flag from the corner, walked, folded it, balled it up, and then kicked it. And then the referee picked it up and handed it to the, you know, the little punk and the kid. Soccer ball. Okay, right there. Right. You can't blame the WWE for that. Okay. Continue, Maurice. Uh, yeah, but it was like also, yeah, but also like I gotta see where Jericho's phone because like he's gotta not only look up, he's not only gotta look up the city he goes to, he also has to look up going into like all Brazilian law because let me tell you, not only could that have been a city offense, that could have also been a federal offense, and I'm pretty sure like if they didn't. Get Jericho on that. He'll kiss like any part of his career from like now on because, yeah, when you do stuff internationally, man, they can really put the screws to you. Yeah, mm. you get stuck over there quickly. I was gonna come to Tom, but it's like Tom left the room. We just probably come back to him when he uh, <laughs> come back. But anywho, um, it's just. It's kind of a it's a double edged sword. They, 
I want to be on Derrick Hope's side, but then he should have kind of knew better, at least. He should have knew that when you touch somebody else's flag, you pretty much is like touching their – that that's just a line that you just don't want to cross. I don't give a damn what country you in, but – Y-T-J. Y-T-J. Yeah, that's why they gave him the opportunity to apologize. Say so either you get arrested or apologize for what you did. Right, and but see the thing is, certain countries would like let that slide. See, it was one thing that Tom did say. He said something about certain countries will allow that, and some countries won't allow that, or something that something like right. that. He said, but this is what I wanted to say. That's like saying that you're going over there and you're pretending to be Japanese. That's just as bad as fucking up their flag or kicking their flag. You go in there and you, you're, you're like literally pretending something that you're not. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Chinese, like Japanese, Chinese, you know, woo, woo, woo. They, you know, when you do that to them, that, that really offends them. Seriously. Like, Lord... Albert, whatever the fuck his name is, him, man, motherfuckers a fucking bi- biker and shit. No motherfucker ain't no fucking Japanese. But they didn't say he was Japanese. They were saying he was a regular superstar that, that adapted to Japanese culture. Okay, yeah, but he, he got his flag on the Titan Tron, though. But he did, he spent a lot of time in Japan. Like, he really adopted a lot of their... Thing. Girl, he ain't no damn Japanese. You know that. Well, we know he, we know he ain't Japanese, but I'm just saying he spent enough time over there that he adapted and learned a lot from the culture. So, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, we get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now, chance that's fine. No superstars now. <laughs> He's on superstars. Yeah. Yep. Looks yeah. like for the okay. past two weeks. Yep. For the past two weeks. Yeah, and not only that, they're probably doing like dark matches. Probably doing like dark matches after all or something. Yeah, at least the Miz getting TV time. Oh well. Even though he's jobbing. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Tom, welcome back. Did you have something to say? Nah, nah, nah. I said I was done with it. I said I was done. Are with you it. sure? I'm done with that. I, I mean, just for the simple fact that they basically proved that in the video. Seeing uh, Jericho do what he did 100% on his own accord goes back to my previous statement. You can't blame the WWE for that. He chose to do that. Therefore, yeah, Tom, I win. Yeah, Tom, I believe you used to say that, you know, talk about Jericho on your radio station, you know, Tone Deaf Radio, you know. Well, I, I need you guys to understand that Tone Deaf Radio is not just a station. It's a complete network. It also houses the WCC radio show. So definitely when those guys return back to air this Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's definitely a good topic that they can cover. Cheap pumps. But anywho, yeah, we will be. We will. <laughs> yeah, by the way, we will re air on June 2nd, 2012 at 9.30 Central. So make sure that you tune in for that. Yes, we will be talking about that. Though. And by the way, folks, in case you didn't know this, we went off last week and we did mention it. Yes, we, yes, we did. So, But stay tuned for that, but... Um, we got some other stuff that we want to cover tonight. Um, what about this? I don't know if y'all heard, but Brian Lesnar was sh- was seen in uh, what was that Las Vegas or some shit in a um, UFC event. What y'all? What did what did y'all think about that? I need you to use the phone. Hey, 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 Sean, wherever you are at, I need you to come uh, away from the, 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 the radio interference. Get off the uh, phone. You need to get it. <laughs> 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 I'm yeah, serious. I think they he... even uh, reference Brock Lesnar tonight on Raw? Yeah, they you did. They took a shot at him. Big Show took a oh. shot at him. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he no, did. He said that some wannabe UFC fighter, <laughs> well, you know, kind of taking some that. jabs at him. But here's the thing about that, though. 
being the fact that you got to remember, just like any wrestling company, Brock Lesnar also has friends in UFC. So if any of his buddies happen to have a fight that night at UFC, you're going to go support your friends. That's just how it is. It's just that because he was just last publicly seen in the WWE, if he gets seen in any other situation, he's going to be looked up as like, whoa, what's going on here? This is some controversy. Oh, he's going back. Well, no, that's mm-hmm. what he do. Just could be going to support his friends. I mean, let's be honest. That's, not, that's like saying Triple H was at the Mayweather fight. You ain't, you it's Justin Bieber. Yeah, ain't nobody running around saying, oh, my God, I think they're trying to get Mayweather back. No, you just like, oh, Triple H is there. Okay, cool. And we left it at that. The same thing they need to do with this situation with Brock. Technically, we know he still has his one-year contract. Yes, there's some issues in regards to it. But for all we know, up front as fans, it could be all part of the storyline. We're supposed to stretch this out for a whole entire year because he only has so many appearances. So we're going to nitpick at everything, the same way they did with The Rock and Cena. They nitpicked at everything The Rock was doing in regards to that storyline. The difference here is Brock Lesnar was looked about as a heel in a feud with Triple H as being the face. So, of course, you're going to do everything to make, you know, Brock Lesnar seem like the negative person in this whole entire story. Whereas then when The Rock and Cena, well, The Rock and Cena were both such big, huge faces, you couldn't play either one of them bad, no matter how you tried to look at it. You know, now we have a pure now we have a pure face uh, versus a pure heel in this particular storyline. So anything Brock Lesnar does in the WWE or wrestling period, get their hands on it, they're always going to make it seem like Brock Lesnar is doing something negative, and that's what the WWE wants. You know. Interesting. Okay, there was spread in rumors that you know he might opt out the contract because he was at UFC. No. I, I I don't think so. I don't think he's gonna breach a way, big ass contract like that. That'd be stupid. The only way he's gonna opt out the contract is if he gets in the ring. You see, that's the only thing you have to look at it here. It's easy money to do nothing but show up, talk, be bad, and probably fight for no more than twenty minutes and still walk out with no injury. Or you can take this similar contract where you can get into a fight with somebody. You can actually lose, and your credibility will be destroyed. Which one would you take? Let, let's be honest here. I'm going to take the easier one. Because if I, lose WWE, right? is, is if I lose in WWE, oh, well, I got two more guaranteed matches, which I can win, and, you know, I can get my credibility back. Or at the end of the day, I can always go back to UFC and say, hey, that was fake for money. This is for real. But if you crash this contract, go to the real, you know, the, the UFC, get your ass whooped. You ain't got nowhere to go because you burnt your bridges over here. Well, let me ask you this. When he lost to Cena, didn't that kind of kill his credibility a little bit? No, it did not. No, it did not. And this is the reason why I said he did not. Nope, I said he didn't. Because when you look at the Cena-Brock Lesnar fight, yes, Brock Lesnar got pinned one, two, three. But up until that last five minutes of that match, he beat that boy pillar to post. Yep. Okay? He beat that boy from the minute that bell rung until Cena had to grab a weapon and crack him in the head in order to win. So, no, he did not lose his credibility. In the WWE, L's and W's mean absolutely nothing. It's what happened in the match that really makes the biggest difference. Because when that's all said and done, and you go back to look at that match, you're not going to talk about, oh, Cena beat Brock Lesnar. No, you're going to be talking about, God damn, that boy beat the dog shit out of Cena. Yep. Okay. Anybody yeah, else? Well, I, like to, yeah. I, like to, I like to say that, you know, I don't, I mean, I can't respect Brock Lesnar as, as a WWE superstar. I respect him as a UFC fighter. But when you have to backtrack, you, I, I can't look at that the right way. Just like Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock went out the best way he went. He said, you know what? WWE ain't working for me. I want to do the real shit. Mm-hmm. And he That's not backtrack. UFC. It's not backtracking. It's not backtracking. The reason why I say it's not backtracking because it's all about money. Anybody who goes to the WWE that's not dreaming to be the next greatest wrestler goes there for money. Mayweather did that little crappy fight for the money. You know what I'm saying? Wrestlers, anybody who leaves a sport like football or USC fight or any form of MMA, it's for the money. Okay. You can say it's backtracking if Ken Samrock left UFC or whatever he was fighting at that time and went to TNA because it's not for the money in TNA. It's because you actually 
want to be a part of wrestling is why you would go to TNA. So you can't sit here and say, oh, he's backtracking, I lost respect, which is just your opinion, you can feel that way. But at the end of the day, you got to look at it from a business point of view. It's always money. WWE is 100% all about the money. Nobody does business with WWE if you ain't getting paid. Plain and simple. And, and, that's, and, that's, and that's fine. Like, like you said, you know, WWE is money. That's all it is. Entertainment equals money. But, you, you know, when you look at it from a sportsmanship type of thing, and Brock Lesnar is doing all this jump back and forth, you know, it kind of throws up someone's hand like, what are you, Brock? And then like, what the fuck around. are you doing? Right. Yeah, I get you know, that. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I mean, I can look at Floyd Mayweather. He just came from a fight, you know, and do that. Okay, that's, you know, that's promo. You know, that's him getting money, which is true. Brock Lesnar, I can't really say that. That's, it's and this is why I don't get. They said that that Brock Lesnar had a um, had a meeting with, I guess the president. What was her name? Diana. Yeah. Right. So whatever. And they said the shit didn't go too good. I mean, what shit? What you expected to go like really awesome or some shit? The motherfucker's under a contract with the WWE. Oh, they they slap, they slap, and then I think it's a slap in the face to USC. Like, brother, we giving you this opportunity. To, you know, to make yourself fuck, saying, like, this is the real shit. We're not going to let you, you know, we're not going to let you say, like, oh, you know, you're going to do WWE because, you know, you can solve for them, you know, build up your reputation as the baddest motherfucker on the planet. So, what are you going to do? Are you here for the money or are you going to be here for your, for your reputation? It's always about money. Think about it. You think the UFC would have even signed a contract with Brock Lesnar had he not already been as popular as he was when he left the WWE? They knew it. By the time Brock Lesnar. Hold on. Hold on. Think about it. They knew that Brock Lesnar brung in people. Think about it. Here's a WWE superstar. Here's a person who has a whole nother category of people who we're trying to cater to already following you. So let him come into this particular company. And he actually does good because he's an athlete. Don't get me wrong. He probably still would have been good anyway, but his notoriety, his respectability, his level that he jumped in that he would not have been at had he not already have all that credibility behind him from the WWE. So by do going back to the WWE, it's just like saying coming home. That's really what he's doing. You wouldn't have nothing. Okay, if you do not have the WWE. So if he says, hey, I'm going to go back over here, I'm going to do some business with the WWE for a minute, we're not going to sit here and say, oh, man, you so dark, you soft, fuck you. No, we're going to say, all right, son, go home, get your money. When you're done getting your money, then we'll holler at you again. Unfortunately, he kind of did it bogus because he still had a fight or two left under his belt, and he fucked that over. Okay. So yeah, just like how you fucked over the WWE too. Remember exactly. WrestleMania twenty? Yeah, true. Don't get me wrong. True. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe the pressure, man. <laughs> 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 I'm against the one match, even though it was bad. Right, and, 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 and Tom bring up a really good point that he's it, it, it's, he's going back and forth. Now, now Tom said he just said that he had two fighters under his belt, and he just said, fuck it, I'm going to go to the WWE. He did the same shit with the WWE as well, said that he was going to no, stay, but then no. he left. No, all bullshit aside, he did not fuck them over. And here's the reason why I say that. Yes, that WWE, that WrestleMania, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. finish that, that WrestleMania 20 match was garbage. Yes, it was. In-ring performance was terrible, okay? But in actual contract, in actual agreement, he did not agree to renew yet. He said he'll think about it. Mm-hmm. He then told them, I'll finish this WrestleMania match for you, okay, even though I'm not going to resign with you. He did not say he'll give him a great match. He just said he'll finish the match, okay? That's exactly what he said. So it's like saying your opponent's going out the door because their contract is up and they don't want to do this no more. You're not renewing your contract because you're going to go try new events. Why should I give you a 110% when – I'm not going to be around, in his opinion, for a long time. So they just gave you the match to meet the agreement. It's just like saying your teacher says all you need is a D to pass this class, so all you get is a D. You don't put forth the effort to get that A. You only give them a D because that's all you need to pass the class. 
That's exactly what the WrestleMania 20 match was. It's that D he needed to say, hey, Vince, I did what you told me to do. My fault. I couldn't give you a good match because Goldberg wouldn't give me the spots that I needed. So you can easily blame on Goldberg because we know Goldberg ain't coming back. That way when Vince is like, okay, yeah, you're right. That was bad. Okay, see you when you decide to come back. We're going to give you a call to do some business. Half one in UFC. That's basically how Vince looked at the whole situation. We have fans got to over. For, for our <laughs> listeners that just came in, we are talking about Brock Lesnar and his little thing with the UFC, his appearance. Oh, the so meeting, the comments, talked about, uh, remember the whole Viking what? debacle that he didn't make it with the Vikings? Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard about that. I just realized something. I read on on a, on our Facebook page, apparently, is it true the meeting did not go well from what I read? Yes, we just said, yeah, we we just spoke on that, yeah. They said that their meeting did not go well. They want to go into details. Um, Like like we just said, like, how would you expect the meeting to go? I mean, the man is in contract with with your, well, I wouldn't even call it rival, but he's in another company, so you want him to come back. Yeah, but you know, I was just like, "What's well, shit?" Hey, uh, <laughs> that's more like real. I gotta get on. He's trying to be a Deion Sanders. He's trying to wrestle and do Mar- Miss Marshall. Yeah, remember how and he, can't, and he can't do that. If he's trying to be flexible, that's not going to happen because the motherfucker is sick. Remember, they gave his blessing to be a part of WWE 12. You know, just to start the negotiations with WWE, and then he went on and just went on to the company. Mm-hmm. Another thing about this is, is there will be some people that try to compare this to La- to Bobby Lashley. Remember when Lashley was part of TNA and was doing MMA? I mean, no, but I, I don't know. When you do that, though. TNA allows you to do other ventures, though. So. Yeah, that's, TNA has exactly. more flexibility. You can't do that in the WWE. Either you I will actually. Or not. Well, actually, I'm starting to wonder that about TNA because remember how they released Anthony Nice because he wanted. They released Anthony Denise because he wanted to do an event with the Great Muda in Japan, which the Great Muda had asked for, and they wouldn't let him do it when they weren't even really using him on the roster anyway. Yeah, you got so I'm starting to wonder about teenage flexibility thing. No, you got, okay, here's a catch to that. And it's the same thing I teach everybody else about why certain people don't be on TV. Just because you're not on the TV taping in regards to TNA does not mean you're not being used in TNA. TNA does I'm just a lot saying, of like. Videos. Hold on, wait a minute. TNA does a lot of live events and does a lot of actual small little tours throughout sure. the country. So he may have actually been on the card in regards to those particular tours in the length of time it took for him to go over to do the Japan thing. He may not have been able to satisfy his tour date. So they would have yeah. to either, hey, go do this or you got to do this here. Well, and he chose to go do the Great Moodle one, which looks more better on your resume, which I'm not mad about it, because eventually TNA will let you come back. If you ain't screwed well, over TNA, they will always let you come back. Brandon. Well, what if it what if it was an opportunity for te- for kind of I don't know. Uh, do you think it might have been an opportunity to kind of broaden? Or well, you know what? Never mind. I, I'm I'm just making up. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not even making sense now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired? Yeah, if someone's tired. You pass your bedtime, brother. Did you have a drink today? <laughs> no. Not too much weed today. Look at I'm, you. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not kidding. Especially well, that man that guy always got a blunt in his mouth. Did well, you smoke the blunt of weed today? I know you ain't smoking. Oh, we're not even supposed to be talking about that. Oops. Breaking the fourth that's, wall. That's why, I came, that's why I came in here late. I just that's got cool. done doing that. Eat some chicken? Or, uh, eat some chicken. No, I ain't eat no chicken, you fucking <laughs> coon. <laughs> I know you ain't talking, Chris. Um, I wasn't the one who just said that, first of all, oh, so know your place. Thank you. <laughs> that's none of your concern. Just, just understand well, uh, that you little, eating chicken like and smoking a blunt does not mix. That's a, that's a little sidekick always talking about mm. chicken and shit. Who the hell nah, is your sidekick not here. He, 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 he at the overnight overstocking right now. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to leave that one alone. They hit him with that Can we get back on topic? Can we get back on topic until the show is over? Yeah, let's, let's get back on topic because I'm tired of this little <laughs> buffoon over there. But anyway, is it true that TNA is suing the WWE because of certain wrestlers, you know, flip flopping back and forth? Shall I want to elaborate um, on that? I think it was. I think it was because of the fact that uh, I can't remember his name. 
he was a former TNA employee and then went to WWE and then gave insider information to WWE about several talents and when their contracts were up. And TNA thinks that WWE, uh, as a result, is trying to poach TNA talent or could try to. Okay, so let's let, okay, so does. let's let's talk about Ric Flair. Ric Flair been jumping back and forth every time the 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 Hall of Fame comes comes around every year or or what have you that. or that's when he's involved, fight. he goes in there for like one night. But that's not. I mean, what you think about that? Would they but use that excuse to sue the WWE? Now, uh, yeah. that's not a but now you know Ric Flair left though. He fired. I mean, he quit. That's not a yeah, because of all the, all, the, all the problems he was having out, outside the ring. I mean, because of all the bar tabs not paid, because of all the childish, because of all the bad behavior he's done, apparently. I mean, I'm starting to think good riddance that he left. And I'm not trying to diss a 16-time world heavyweight champion, but you look you look at his life outside the ring. I, 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 he's one of the cases where you have to separate the wrestler from the human being, basically. That man is a former shell of a 16-time world heavyweight champion. When that man that joined man. the WWE after the evolution was done, that is when the last time you really seen Ric Flair. Plain and simple. Well, mm. So, like, what, like, so really, do you think, you know, TNA has the, I guess, do they have the right to be- the WWE? Because based on... Whatever they believe. Like, no, I mean, it should be like fair game if he left the company and went with them. He just told nope. them what he knew. No, nope. unless they he was obligated. Nope. Basically, they're saying nope. it's like insider trading. Essentially, is what they're saying. It's a breach of privacy. Where, yep. where basically, if basically if. You, if you're a, a major player in a big company and you know your stock's about to tank, so you basically give somebody an insider stock that the SEC is coming after your ass. That's what mm-hmm. TNA is basically saying, that because this guy left, he knew the ins and outs of certain TNA contracts. So, for example, let's use Rick Flair as an example. If he knew or Alex Flair Shelley. If, or okay, Alex Shelley. We'll say Alex Shelley. He knew Alex Shelley's contract would say ending this month. He knew that, okay, this is how much Alex Shelley signed for the last time. This is how much TNA is willing to give him. If you want Alex Shelley, this is how much you need to come in at. That's exa- that's what they're basically saying that this guy did for WWE, basically giving them the edge to outbid them and say, okay, well, I'm going to take them. That's the problem. Mm. First thing, I think it's fair game. Oh First thing, I think it doesn't matter. It, no matter what, if he was going to go to WWE, he was going to go regardless, and the WWE was going to outbid you anyway. But the thing is, okay, 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 Shannon, you can't well, let me ask you as much this. Can because of all the ridiculous cuts, because of all the ridiculous money you're paying Flair, Hogan, and Bischoff, and the money that you're going to be paying to his daughter, too. So, you know what? At this point, you need to worry about more about how much you're paying Hogan and them rather than who's leaving. Because at this point, at the rate this is going, it's not going to matter whether or not insider training is happening. They're going to leave anyway. Okay. Well, 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 Shannon, let me ask you this. Do you think TNA is desperate right now, then? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They're definitely desperate. If they're Probably bringing Brooke Hogan, I look, uh, look at how many Look at how many former WWE stars they fought in thinking it was going to change stuff around. When Matt Hardy went to TNA, I was like, yes, I'm going to watch. And for about two weeks, it was great, and then the shit went down the damn toilet. Like, hmm. it, they, they think they can take these guys and do something with them, but the problem is they don't know what to do when they get them. So they give them these great big books. And the fact contracts. that they come up with stupid gimmicks and storylines for some of them. I mean, right. It's kind of like they give them a quick, a okay. quick push okay. when they get there and then stop. And oh, right, and then stop, push, right. Which right. WWE and is also notorious for doing, but TNA kind of doesn't do All right, okay. Got to speak. Got to speak. First and foremost, all, all right. right. <laughs> yes, TNA has the right to sue because it's a breach of privacy. Guaranteed by any contract that you sign with any company, whether it's wrestling or any other type of job, the number one clause in every contract is what goes on behind these doors stay behind these doors. So even though, yes, the person may jump ship eventually or they may leave to go where the money is, in that contract you sign, you shut the fuck up about what goes on behind these walls. That is what the contract that you sign agree to. So when you leave and you talk about what goes on behind those walls, yes, we have the right to sue you. In regards to that, you sue the person, but since the person is under contract with WWE, 
WWE's name also gets tagged onto that same lawsuit, thus for they end up suing the WWE. Now, mm. that's that part. Second of all, the TNA and what they do with their wrestlers, first of all, every single person in this room needs to step back and remember one big thing. TNA is an independent, small-time, local company with a TV deal. It is, it wasn't, and never will be made to create rivalry with the WWE. So Especially not the way it's going now. No, hold on. I'm getting tired of y'all dissing TNA, and y'all don't even look at TNA the right way. No, I'm, you can't I'm just look, saying. So you can't really you look can't. at TNA the right you way, to be honest with you. No, and then you can't look at TNA the right way. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Because everybody tends to shit on TNA because you're looking at it with a sports entertainment goggles on. You Wait, can't sports do entertainment that. goggles Trust on. Me, oh, wait, 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 let me finish, let me finish. I'll let you finish, let me finish. Okay, because I'm getting sick and tired of y'all doing it, but don't never let nobody finish. Let me finish. Okay. Everybody wants a WWE <laughs> because it's all glamour, it's all glitz, it's highlight, there's money all over the place. It's an old company that's been around for a long time. They literally have gotten rid of the full wrestling aspect to the fact that when we see Chris uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan wrestle, we go goo goo gaga over that. We like, oh my God, it's wrestling, it's great. But here's the thing with TNA: they've always been wrestling companies first. Okay, they've always been. Exactly. Yes, they bring in. Mm-hmm. Yes, they bring in. And that's the good thing about names. it. They bring in all these big names. Yes, there's two problems when you bring in big names though. Number one, you bring in a fan base that's not used to just straight wrestling. Therefore, you don't understand what's going on with TNA. You used to all the glamour and glitz that's in the WWE that when you look at TNA and you see the quality is down here in the C category when y'all used to see an A and B, y'all automatically instantaneously start shitting on it. Then you take in an individual who's wrestled in a company who only has 10 moves in their whole repertoire, and you put them in the ring against somebody like a James Storm or a Bobby Roode who can wrestle circles around them, okay? And then y'all be like, oh, that's, 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 y'all ain't using them right. Y'all ain't using them right. They should be here. No, they shouldn't be. It's a new company. You need to work your way up from the bottom like everybody else. I don't give a fuck who it is. If you brought Chris Jericho in, Jericho, in my honest opinion, needs to work his way back up to the top just like everybody else. But because they need to get that fan base to stay consistency so the people who have been in TNA can get looked at, unfortunately you have to throw them in that top picture to begin with. You have to put them right away at the top so people can be like, oh, my God, Jeff Hardy's here. We're going to watch Jeff Hardy because he's the dude I like. Okay? Jeff Hardy might not be built for the main event yet. Technically, Jeff Hardy should be in the X Division clowning, in my honest opinion, but because little kids like Jeff Hardy, if we want little kids to keep watching wrestling, because Mommy and Daddy goes watch wrestling and they spend the money, we got to keep Jeff Hardy up here. Okay? Yeah, because David Dewey made him a uh, main eventer, too. Right. Number but three, you got to remember, you got to remember, wrestlers come with personal problems. You cannot fault TNA, Matt and Jeff being drug heads. You can't fault uh, yeah. the WTNA for Ric Flair not being able to manage his money right. You can't yeah. fault TNA for anything That's that true. goes on outside of TNA. But the problem I'm not is that those them. I'm problems Flair for that. Back, but the thing about it is, is their problems trickle back into the ring. Their problems come back into the ring that it affects the quality of the product because these wrestlers' personal problems. So if we got rid of all these old school wrestlers, and their personal problems are gone, and we had nothing but just regular, everyday TNA wrestlers who bust their ass day in and day out, most of y'all still wouldn't watch it simply because you don't know nobody there. It's not the way the WWE is. The one thing about TNA that pisses me off about everybody, especially in this group, is if one person says something bad about TNA, half of y'all jump on that same damn bandwagon but will not put forth the effort to sit down and watch TNA long enough to follow the storyline. Y'all jumping in catch one that Janet, you're an exception to the rule because you love wrestling, period. <laughs> but, and wrestling does matter there. Okay. But, but, yeah, but, but, 
Yeah, yeah it, it really does matter. It does. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain things that I don't like. Go ahead, go, Brandon. Did you have something to say? Because no, no, let, no. Let him finish. Let him finish. Go ahead, Tom. Actually, actually, Shannon was talking. Shannon. We we hear what you're saying, and I'm not speaking for. I will speak for me. I try to watch TNA, and granted, they're great in the ring. It's their story yes. that I can't follow. Which, like you said, yes, I'm into the glitz, I'm into the glamour, so fault me for that. Lately, I've been able to get back into it, but I've only been able to get back into it because the only thing they can offer me is the Divas or the Knockouts. Mm-hmm. So they're getting me with the Knockouts because WWE is not fulfilling that for me. When TNA can actually have some stories that make sense or coherent or whatever. And it's not the flavor of the month. I hey, be all man. Over, like, right on right. But right now, their wrestling is great, but the story sucks, with the exception because of the knockouts. And even that is getting me, because for some reason, you've got this big-ass, big hillbilly gym dude as a damn you should knock out tag champ, and I don't understand shit. All it's right, like okay. all these being women's right. champ. Here's okay, let's go, because this, this is a good topic. It's a good topic. Here's the thing, so, thing about TNA. Here's the thing about TNA. If you I will say that's TNA, something I don't like about it. Uh, all right, this is about TNA. If you did not watch TNA until they got their Big Q's contract and Cat Hogan got there and tried to make them compete against the WWE and all that stuff, if you had watched TNA prior to before then, TNA is not a storyline-based company. They never cut no. Most real, because they're a local wrestling company. Definitely. If anybody's ever been to a real local wrestling, the story is told in the ring. It's always told in the ring. There's never been that, that is true. in a 15-minute conversation that's had before, during, or after a match like they're trying to do now. So they're new to that. So, of course, a lot of those storylines are going to suck. That's another reason why, if you pay attention, a lot of the WWE wrestlers that are there are talkers. They're teaching these guys how to be able to do that. They're teaching these guys how to speak. Because they tell their stories in the ring. They tell their stories with action. They tell their stories with behavior. But when Bischoff and Hogan started being the leaders of that company, they're trying to implement conversation into it to tell the story so less wrestling has to be done and you're less likely to have injury. That's the problem. That is true. I I, I understand that. I understand that. But like you said, once you get out the storyline, you let those go, and you actually watch the match, the matches are epic. Because the match is exactly what's telling the story. Not what you hear on the mic, not the conversations you hear backstage or anything of that nature. That's because they're taught to tell the story in the ring. Now, Aaron, and that's also something with ROH, by the way. Yeah. And that's all Especially with ROH. And that's why the new induction of ROH completely uh, sucks ass compared, compared to the old induction. That everybody loves. Because you put too much in there that didn't need to be in there. It's a broke. It was a perfectly boat that you guys tried to fix e- up even more to make it's people not come broken. Up with, 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 right. They just wanted to say, it's "Hey, come over, look at us. We put streamers on our boats. We have a bigger mass now. We have a blue fish on the side. Why?" Mm-hmm. Okay, Tony, you bring up some really good points about TNA. Here's my problem There's with TNA. Some things I don't like about TNA. TNA, like I said, in so many shows that we have done over this past year, over the past year or so, TNA is just another WCW 2.0. That's my yeah, problem. Exactly. T point two to the T. We're not talking about good WCW. Now, the reason why I say that is because, for the simple fact, their storyline is similar to WCW. It's similar to WWE. TNA problem is, I don't care if it's in the basement or if they tell the story in the ring or whatever, what have you, whatever. The thing about it is they need to have their own identity. That is Instead the problem with TNA. Up, 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 they don't have they don't have that. The six sided ring. They, they that was their identity. Uh, what happened when Hogan and, and Bish and Bischoff came in, what happened? They got rid they changed, of it. Exactly. Okay. Hold on, hold on, wait yeah. a minute. The so one wait thing minute. about oh. TNA I will say about this is one thing about it is, remember though, it did not originally start with six sides. It didn't go to six sides until two thousand four. Right. So it right. originally was four sides. Yes. But so why is it so, built their so no. I'll answer all these questions for you. Number one, Chris, wrestling has been going on for damn near 100 years. 
as much as you want to sit here and say TNA is copying ideas from everybody else, if you pay close attention, every single storyline and gimmick in regards to whatever company you go to is a recycled gimmick. No storyline is original anymore. It's always taken from somebody else. The thing about Mm -hmm. it is, Chris, is you're new to wrestling within the last decade, decade and a half, that everything to you seems to be new and now just seems to be recycled because you're looking at another company. But in actuality, everything in the WWE has been recycled at least three times over. Everything gets recycled based on a new era. Like the feud between John Cena and Big Show. Okay? A new era and a new Mm -hmm. generation. It's always Mm -hmm. going to be reused with just a little tweak to fit what's going on in current life right there. So mm-hmm. that's one like Big Show and John Cena, for example. You're going to see the same storylines no matter what. So right away, throw that out the window. You can't blame anybody for that. Hell, w- mm-hmm. the WWE actually is using old WCW uh, storylines. They use old ECW. Hell, they were using ECW storylines while ECW was still active. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's what, and that's kind of where the hardcore, di- and that's what they kind of did with the hardcore division, wouldn't you say, with all the hardcore stuff? Hardcore that they kind of, yeah, but yeah. like I said, they kept it, they kept it fresh. Now Tom might have a point behind that, but see, the thing is, it's that thing called creativity that comes into play. They now, it. now, they, now they might be able to recycle it over and over and over and over again, but if you don't have that creativity, then it's not. It's, it's you have that, but Chris, here's the, the secondary part to your question. The secondary part to your question is the WWE has not only recycled storylines, they've also gone ahead and renewed their whole entire writing staff over time. So eventually the same people who were in working for the WWE in the writing staff during when President Jack Tunney was in charge is not going to be the same people that's currently writing right now. That's one thing i got to give Vince credit. He does fire and hire new talent all the time. That's why you'll take an old storyline for them, and they go ahead and they can touch it up a little bit. Yes, Vince do some of the dumbest shit when he brings people in to be on the writing staff that even us sit back and be like, what the fuck is going on? But that's because you've got to take those rich and those rich. Freddie Prince Jr., prime example. Why in the flying fuck would Freddie, Freddie Prince Jr. be on a wrestling writing staff? Why? Because you need that Hollywood aspect. Now, TNA, on the other hand, being an adolescent, now let me step that back, being a toddler in the wrestling game compared to the WWE being That's been around for, 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 man, for you know, right. over 40 years while TNA's only been Their great-grandfather, they're new. So the writing staff, the people, the backstage, all these people in their, con- in their company are always going to be mostly people who have worked in WCW, WWE. ECW, they're going to have already worked in these major companies. So mm-hmm. not saying that they're not going to give you a fresh idea, but they're the ones that originated the idea to begin with. So like instead of them people, saying, let's come up with new ideas, they say, let's take this old idea and use new people. That's the okay. difference. Or, 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 let me ask, uh, let me ask you this. this. Okay. How about we just break the tradition? Instead of doing you know, the, the recycle, the recycle. How about we just do something different for a change? But what can you do that's original at this point? I mean, right. I mean how, how many things have, nothing, what hasn't been done in wrestling nothing, in the last couple of years? But it also, it also depends on the restrictions as well. I mean, you know, I understand yeah, that the WWE true. can't do as much shit as they used to in the Attitude Era, so I understand that part. But as far yeah. as... I don't know if maybe it's the the writers that's retarded or if they're just like limited. They can still I, I don't come know. up with better stuff than they can now. I mean, right. they don't have to go attitude error or anything like that. But they can still come up with better stuff. Exactly. You know, I don't care how much time they recycle. I don't even care. I don't even give a fuck if they all if they go all the way back to the 1950s. I just want it to the point where if they recycle something, make it like you know what Tom said, tweak it. Make it a little bit better, but now Instead TNA, the- I, and you know, I'm gonna say this about TNA. TNA has gotten better since the last time I seen them. They have gotten better, but you see, the thing is, what they lack is consistency. It's like they're they always one for step like forward only, and two steps back. Right, okay. they they do it. It'll be good, but then they pull back. 
They're not like, you know, giving us their full potential. That's the only thing I don't like about TNA. But other than that, they have they have a hell of potential, but you know, it's just sometimes they just kinda drop the ball sometimes, especially on some of the story Or they'll make some stupid moves or something like that. And here's and here's the thing with that, okay? TNA has a total different side of wrestling and the way they do their management of their skills than what the WWE can do. See, number one, like I said, I gotta go back. You gotta remember, TNA is really just a local wrestling company that has a team. That was originally based in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. No, so when you look actually, at that aspect, you have to think about how does local wrestling companies manage their talent? How do they do things? For an example, Chris, when we go to BCW, had it not been at least the first four matches, always someone brand new who we never seen again. The reason mm-hmm. being is because they come on a short-term contract. They only come in for a certain length of time. They work these shows, and they go about their business. TNA is mm-hmm. the same way. Nobody, Not everybody on their record are what you would consider a full-time employee. Therefore, you're not going to no. get a, a six- to seven-month storyline with too many people that you can continue mm. to say, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. No. Most of the time, these agreements are only about three to four months. So you'll get a, a, a good three months of TV time, four pay-per-view, and then this person is off. Everybody on CNA roster is minus mm. about 20 people also work in other companies. They do overseas tours. They do... Yeah, because some of the... A lot of those contracts are non-exclusive to TNA because they can go other places. Correct. You know? Correct. The mm. thing about it is and, the is the only company that has ever been able to take a talent and make it 100% exclusive. When they... When they and then put the 90... The uh, no compete clause they, as well. Yeah, go when ahead, they destroy territories, okay, that's what made the problem. Had the WWE not destroyed territories and made it be that you can wrestle wherever you want to, guaranteed companies like TNA would be some of the big dogs in the business right now because that's exactly what it is. It's a territorial company that has a Even territorial though origin, island that does a I mean, look at most of their pay-per-views, business. other than, say, maybe the big, their big four. And sometimes there were some years, uh, the last two years of summer, or the last two years of Slam Reversary were held in the impact zone. And that's usually one of the pay-per-views that usually goes outside, you know? It usually goes in different places, but even you know, even some of their even some of their more legendary pay per views are sometimes still in the impact zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. they don't they don't go out very much. I thinking about it, I gotta I could agree I could agree with you on that one. I mean, at this point, it and seems that, like it's 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 on that second yeah. echelon, but at the same time, it's it is still pretty much local. So I will agree right. with you on that. That's what I need to forget. Y'all have to stop looking at it as the number two or the big company to rival W. No. It's a local company yeah. that just happens to have TV. Once you get that blinder off of it, it's, once you get it off the fact that it's not the WWE, it's really just no. A it's, local of course, company, it's not. No. A no. lot of people not in any ways in WWE. I, I, no, not at all. I don't give a damn how many times we want to say that TNA need to step their game up so they can rival the WWE. That's not going to happen. We are not going to do the fact that they haven't been there as long. Well. The yeah. I think. I think the point. I think the thing is, like fans, like all of us that's in this room right now, want a company that can rival the WWE. And I'm not talking about Kim. Like I'm not talking about WWE. Did. But I'm not talking about Ring of Honor. I'm not talking about TNA. We actually need a fucking company to rival the WWE. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Exactly. All the race shit isn't exposed. It isn't really exposed at night. What did you say, Wes? Don't nobody come close to it but TNA. But nobody I mean, w- line, though, if you really if you really watch TNA and like watch where all their wrestlers started from, they got some straight storylines. Like Bobby Roode holding the belt all this time don't really bother me. I mean shit. He played that struggle on TNA. He deserved that shit. So, I mean know, he's like, great too, just like Ben Ray. Me, they shit. got some great shit there. The well let me ask y'all this. this. You know, if, if we're gonna like sit here, we're gonna talk about TNA, like let, let's let's get in a little bit deeper with TNA. Bobby Roode. Do you think he might go to the WWE? No. no he so. he, uh, mm. it was reported that he was in the WWE. One at a time. Go ahead, Wes. There's know. something that, um... They, they, they said it was reported before he won that belt that, that, that Triple H liked him and James Storm, but then shit. He won the belt, so he never went there. Shit, I don't think he needs to go no more. 
Okay. Here's, I don't know if it's the belt. Okay. Here's, 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 I don't think he'll fit in the WWE. I don't think he's a type that will fit mm. in the WWE nor last in the WWE. Yeah. yeah, Simone Joe. I just, I just because Simone Joe is who is that one dude? He remind me of um, Simone Joe. Like I said, Simone Joe just got that. He, he, I'm serious. He got that rebellious attitude, which I love. Don't get me wrong, like but. Taz? Taz, no. Taz is too soft. Taz is too soft. He's a little bit better than Taz. He's a little bit better than Taz. Yeah, he's way better than Taz. It's just, yeah. Um, rebellious. I'm serious. Come on, Joey. If it's Taz, it's just he just do this suplex, you know, capture suplex, then do the task and shit, and all that shit. Right WWE want to win all the games. You guys hear about broke his neck and the fact that he was still able to walk to the hospital. That's not sick. But, it, but um, I don't know. I, he, there's a reason he was called the human suplex machine. That was his bread and butter, you know? Yeah. You know, and the fact that and most of the time he didn't use weapons except for tapes, you know, as far as ECW goes. I don't want to talk about TNA, you know, matching up with WWE. I mean, let's, let's off it. We can all agree. I don't know that we can all agree that a lot of WWE superstars are in TNA, but it is starting yeah. to shape up to be a WCW, like a watered down WCW. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm not going to have to <laughs> Well, well then, would you kind of say that sometimes some of the WWE superstars in TNA were misused? Or what could be cut, or or do you think that some of them really just couldn't cut it in the WWE? I don't know if all of them could really cut it, just couldn't cut it. I don't know. A lot of them could not be. A lot of them could not get to that main event plateau uh, that they wanted uh, to be. Uh, That's uh, the reason why they uh, was TNA. Okay, like for an example, Christian. Christian is the best example of a WWE superstar going to TNA and getting and getting better and being better and proving he's better than what the WWE used him for, only to come back and literally be put back in the exact same place the WWE had to begin with. With that shut up title. Yeah. Christian is one of, one of the best guys, uh, most underrated superstars in WWE. He, he was in TNA, he was like the top dog. And, like, once again, I want to say, yeah, WWE superstar Miss Hughes, that should have stayed in TNA. Why did he go back to WWE? I have no idea. Money. You were not paying attention. It was money. It was so bad that the TNA. The same reason Joe Kim originally left TNA to go back to WWE in the first place. Uh. Uh, it's always uh, money. Because she wanted a hefty pay raise in TNA, and they didn't give it to her. I'm just, I'm just adding that money. for Joe Kim, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same thing. It's always money. Uh, uh, that's that's you know, the only reason when she came why back. anybody in TNA leaves to go to WWE, it's always money. It's never in the It's always money. It's always money. If you take a better one, once again, Brock Lesnar, I'm not trying to switch back. But Brock Lesnar, he was doing real things at the time. Go to the WWE for money for what? Well, Brian Lesnar, he 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 just a, he just a normal flip flopper. I mean seriously. I just I don't know about Brock Lesnar because if he hadn't had his tuberculosis, if he hadn't lost his last fight, I'm not so sure he would have went to WWE. To be honest, I I'm not, I don't know about that. I don't know Brock Lesnar. I mean Brock Lesnar was like bitching a lot. He was saying that. He didn't, you know, he, he don't want to risk injury. But then if you didn't want to risk injury, then why would you go in the NFL? And then if you get, if, if that didn't work, then why the hell would you go to the one place where you can definitely get an injury? 
brain injury, heel injury, ass injury, groin injury. Ask Mark Terry. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, really, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, Brock Lesnar, don't get me wrong. He is a superior athlete. I love Brock Lesnar. What he does in the ring, I, I respect that. But, however, I don't respect why I don't respect someone that sits there and says, uh, I don't think I can do this. Uh, I'm gonna go over here, and then so you sit over here for five minutes. You sit over here for five minutes, and then you skip over here, and then you go back over here, and then you go back over here again, and say, "Oh, I don't want to do this no more." So I'll just quit everything. I'm done. Yeah, are you trying to talk about him being quitted by any chance? Hey, one at a time, y'all. One at a time. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, whoever. Um... Wes, was you talking? Uh, uh, uh. uh. She's not. Okay. Next person. Who, who? Um, <laughs> all, uh, all I was going to say is uh, this sounds like it ties into what Triple H said about him being a quitter everywhere it went. All right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Because from what you're saying, it kind of seems like when Triple H called him a quitter, it kind of sounds like he had some merit behind it. I'm sorry if I'm... Sorry if I'm if I'm kind of behind on this, because it seems like everybody already knows that. Um, but, yeah. My thing is with Brock Lesnar, I can't respect him as a WWE superstar. I mean, I'll give him respect the fact that, you know, you know what he did in the ring, but as a business person and as just, you know, bouncer from one corporation to the next corporation, you know, or saying, you know, like you said, you know, I don't want to get hurt. And then, brother, then why are you in the business for that's you're, true. You, ha- you got to know the territory. I mean, it comes with the territory. Exactly. Because, like, I guess, I, like, I tried out for pro wrestling. And, you know, they, you know, we take the bumps and stuff like that. And when you do get hurt. My first match, I had a busted lip because I took a clothesline wrong. So I'm, like, I'm kind of, like, looking at Brock Lesnar, like, brother, you took, you, you know, you go in the business, you, you do your thing, and, you know, congratulations on all the success you've done. But then you quit WWE yeah. for whatever reason. You go and you try the NFL. You know, you, obviously, you know, you make it there. And then you go to Japan. And wrestle, and you didn't like it there. So you turn around and you go to UFC. Although he was, I don't know, was he good in Japan or? or I don't think he went. I mean, did he go to Japan? I don't think he did. I never he was a good angle in Japan. If I'm not mistaken, he champion. He became a champion. Yeah, didn't he face Kurt Angle sometimes in Japan? I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 he did. 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 He but like I said, you know, once again, you know, he goes to, you know, UFC. You know, I hate to the tease the subject because we were talking about TNA. But you know, once again, you know, if you get hurt, you get hurt, brother. If you're in the if you're in the business for, you know, to make money, well, guess what? You're going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Ooh. You know, that's a smack in the face to dudes like Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Edge. You know, you know, I, I pray that you know, so, you know, Eddie Guerrero. You know, if these brothers let them let them out for them, they do what you're supposed to be doing. And you don't do this. Now, I mean, if, if, if Brock hears this on the radio, I, I do apologize. But the thing is, brother, you do, you, you do what you're supposed to do. If you make your money, you make your money. You don't want to do what you just make up your mind. Well, you know, that, we, that's, I don't think they have a. I don't think they have as grueling schedule as you know compared to WWE. I don't think they go on road, you know, uh, house shows and working almost four. Well, four that five was one of the reasons he originally left because he hated the schedule. Now, now, Brandon, now, now you just said uh, I'm not Brandon. I'm sorry, B Dub. Okay, B Dub. You said that yeah, yeah. the WWE, right? Because there's two brands in here. And, you know, I'm trying to distinguish one of them. But beat up. You could call you me just be dueling or something, you know. You could call him dueling. Be no <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, you ain't. Okay, so beat up. <laughs> Seeing that the WWE has had this schedules, let me ask you this. And I'm going to matter of fact, I'm going to ask the whole room this. Everybody can answer. Do you think that the WWE should continue this trend as far as bringing in part-time wrestlers like The Rock, Brock, and Undertaker? 
Do you think that I mean, will work? But if, they, but if they do, they need to use those part-time workers to help elevate the mid-cards, even though they're working, um, you know, other same schedules, man. Hmm. Yes. That is interesting, though. But, what, but see, let me ask you this. Do you think the part-time wrestlers will actually take a fall? For a mid card like Miz or Dolph Ziggler or yeah, whatever. Yeah, for the for the money, uh, yeah, I mean, for no. the money, yeah, no, especially no. with Brock. But what happened if they have huge egos like Brock Lesnar? Because uh, like, come on, you getting paid five million dollars, or obligated, you know, to be here for an entire year. He said, hey, so basically, when you're there, you should do whatever they tell you to do. That's true. Well, too. You got superstar status. They abuse their superstar power. You got superstar status. If we're going by that, though, then should we say the same thing about The Rock? Because he didn't have John Cena. That's what he did. See, Rock is is a little, I don't know. He kind of puzzles me a little bit. Oh, no. I don't know. Do you think The Rock would have something less than we get criticized for? Like now I'm not saying that, now I'm not saying because you know I'm one of you know the biggest fan of the Rock, but like I said, it's like he kind of puzzles me a little bit. You know, when I look back at WrestleMania, I'm glad that he won, but at the same time, would he would actually fail to John Cena? I don't know. I, I... actually no, because he's a Rock. Is it true what that they're going to have a no. three match series though? If I'm not mistaken, because I don't know. Then wasn't there reports that there was going to be a three match series between the two? It's in, it's no, so they, they're not going to do that anymore. They were saying, depending on how well it, it did, but come on, after working them a whole year trying to build up that match. Uh, they don't, I don't know if they want to do that. That, that kind of. I don't, I don't think match. they're going to do it with, with seeing his ex wife got her hands on his balls. That's what I thought they were going to off tonight for. Hey, they That's gave him a night off tonight. He said, go ahead and do this pre-recording, man. You would get the night off. His wife said, I'm going to have the night off. I'm so sorry to your money. That's fine. Right. There was no C-Nation tonight. What the fuck? Well, C-Nation, I guess, it was, um, they didn't say anything on e Wrestling News about why Cena wasn't there. I don't know. I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was in uh, Afghanistan or what. I mean, I thought he would have been on satellite. Cena was doing his annual Memorial Day thing he always does. So what happens is if you ever pay attention around Memorial Day and Labor Day, he's always doing something in regards to the troops or something in regards to the Make-A-Wish kids, especially for, like, military yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's why he wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. He said he was there for a dark match, though. He was there for the dark match? Oh, yeah, they that was after stupid. Off, he did a dark match against, uh, whatchamacallit, against Big Show and John Laronitis, and actually I think he's supposed to be a dark match with SmackDown Mom. But I don't know how true that is. Cause that's uh, he might have came out there probably when the, you know, when the, we're talking about was it before Raw or after Raw? Um, I, I didn't mean to cut you off like that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, 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 before no, we, really before we, uh, before we end the show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's talk about one last thing. ECW. What? No, no, before <laughs> no. What y'all think about um, WWE 13? Uh, they better be good on the graphics. That's all I gotta say. If um, I need to the it's not a glitchy. Uh, I've heard one of the big problems with the glitches. Uh, yeah, the glitches for the WWE like 12 is just it is it was really huge on me. I I I, I, I love the game, but I just didn't like the glitches. I mean, like it was only glitchy because it was a new system. They had a new engine this year. So when you do something brand new true. like that, you're gonna have problems. You gotta remember it opened up so All much right. freedom for your character to do so much. Because of that, you're going to get glitches, especially moves that used to be just like one big motion, like uh, the ball and elbow. That used to be automatic. If you went down, you did the ball and elbow, it would do its normal motion. Now, this year, you can be in the corner, and they'll still pull it off. Because of that, you It doesn't automatically warp to the ring, not to mention the fact yeah, you can interrupt anymore. someone's it's finisher never. like you could on the right. GameCube game. That's another thing. Them. Because you can interrupt everything, they have to leave it, like, open with room for error. Unfortunately, those errors can happen sure. on their own sometimes, too. So, 
That, that uh, do you think they can change really that well. for uh, WWE? You know, they could have nope. got a better promo of the game, first of all. They had everybody thinking that's a new uh, faction, a new group <laughs> coming to the WWE. You know, this is Matt Morgan in the, in the promo cut. You know what I mean? Yeah. They could have done a better promo. Well, like Dean Ambrose, man, man, but oh, it was just a video game. That's coming out three, three months from now. Three months from now. Well, ain't it four months? Ain't it four months? Yeah, they, they say it's supposed to come out in October 29th or something. October. More likely it's going to be pushed back, so guys, don't don't don't, don't expect for it to come out on the, on the 29th. So. Yeah, it always comes out about back, maybe It always comes out in November. They say, no, they say October 30th. Yeah, yeah, it always comes out like on like... November 19th or some shit. I mean, no, it came out. Is that the shit that they showed on YouTube? Can you send some? Oh, no, that shit look hot. I mean, if you can break the, the ring with the super suplex, it's hot. That cool. That's I mean, hot. That's something that's never been done on the WWE and, game. And yeah, and and just, I mean, if you remember, like, a long time ago during the whole, you know, SmackDown series, there was a time where you could climb up on the top of the uh, Titantron and, and, you know, fall, fall on your opponent. But when was this? Wait, when was that? Uh, yeah, when, when was this? Because I never thought this SmackDown game was that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, man, I'm trying to figure out which hey, one that, that was so I can do it. Is that on Here Comes the Pain or, 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 or yeah, some yeah, of the Team Pain one? Shut your mouth. The Brock Lesnar cover. Oh, yeah. shut your mouth. Okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, the, it was the one that had Brock Lesnar on the front cover. Yeah, shut your oh, mouth. Oh, yeah, I got, I got you now. Oh, I'm not saying shut your mouth, like, literally. Here, here, wait, wait, no, wait, wait, here comes the pain at Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't no shut your mouth. That was here comes the pain, man. Here, here, that here comes the pain at Brock Shut your mouth. No, no, I'm really I'm saying now, shut your mouth. Damn it. <laughs> shut your mouth was the one before that. Here comes the pain. You want no damn here comes the pain, nigga. It was shut your mouth. Here comes the pain, nigga. Look at that. Shut your mouth. He eliminated. <laughs> he right eliminated. Well, anyway, thank you, wrestling fans, for tuning in Look to the buffoonery of the show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you it once again. Like thank you, wrestling fans, for it. Dude, dude, what you do? Dude, 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 shut up. Shut your mouth. Eat, eat, what, 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 thank you, wrestling fans, for attending the, our our buffoonery. <laughs> Tune in to next again. week when we will talk about Raw and No Way Sorry, Out. Right, and remember, and remember Sorry, next right, Saturday. Right, we will we will be airing. Can you please shut up? Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Put the blood in your damn mouth. We we will be we will be on our show uh for WCC uh radio on uh June what's that, June June second? Yep, two thousand two thousand twelve. At nine thirty central, so make sure you tune in. I'm your host, Mr. Team Bring It. You will get popped if you don't tune in. <laughs> Shut up. Sean. We will see y'all. Have a good night, y'all, and happy Memorial Sean Day. Peace. Out. Peace. Peace. Peace.